They got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I solve them. I run through the money. The pressure be calling. Left all my blessings. I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression. It's all that I wanted. The phone and affection. I summon and dub it. Cause they got problems on problems. What's going on, people? It's the Xbox 448. And in today's video, we are tackling how Microsoft and Sony are going to leave no gamer behind when it comes to holiday 2020 and the launch of the Series X and the PlayStation 5. Now, you got to be asking yourself, what? how are these companies going to have no gamer left behind? You're, you're going to have to get the new systems. Now, Microsoft and Sony have two different plans in line when it comes to the release of their new systems that they believe will have no gamer left behind and and let's get into that so let's start with microsoft because microsoft uh especially out on social media it's causing a huge stir there's people out there uh claiming with the way that microsoft is gonna leave no gamer behind it's actually gonna hold back games on the series x and what they are talking about is something called forwards compatibility for one year and uh for people who don't know forwards compatibility is when their new series when their new hardware comes out the series x comes out they're gonna have a launch lineup there's gonna be first party titles in the launch lineup um forwards compatibility is uh you can take those launch lineup first party launch lineup games and you can buy them and download them or, or, or you know put the disc in to the xbox one's of the world like the one x the one s the original one and you can still play those games now graphically they are not they're definitely going to be inferior to what the series x has to offer but all in all you know if you can't swing into this new generation you can't uh automatically buy in to you know a new console you'll still be able to play the games which is really good especially for game pass subscribers because people who are already paying you know monthly for that subscription when halo infinite comes out you'll just be able to download it no matter which xbox one you have and you'll be able to play it now the best version will be on the series x um what sony is doing which i've seen people on twitter try to state it's the same thing it's not sony is talking about cross generational gameplay now, what cross-generational gameplay is, it's different than forwards compatibility, and it actually makes me more confident on my whole kind of like double-dip their uh, theory when it comes to Sony and the PlayStation 5. Cross-generation gameplay will be um, let let me let me kind of flesh this out real really quick. Uh, let's see, Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2. Are, are coming out on the ps4 this year cross-generational gameplay say one of those games has a multiplayer to it right cross-generational gameplay is uh those games come out for the ps4 ps5 launches and sony releases the ps5 version of those games now when it comes to the multiplayer um you'll be able to play games with people you'll be able to play this game with people who own it on ps4 and ps5 now um sony came out and stated that in previous generations like when you bought um say a ps3 game right and then you ended up buying it for ps4 afterwards those games were actually supported on different servers and it didn't allow the ps3 gamer to play against the ps4 gamer in in the multiplayer aspect of the game and and what sony is doing now is they are going to be using the same servers for games that are running on ps4 and ps5 to the point where cross-generational gameplay you will be able to play against people regardless if they have a ps4 or a ps5 it doesn't matter whatever console they're playing that game on and that's the difference forwards compatibility one game and it can run on you know the xbox one series x uh cross-generational gameplay you have to purchase the game on the ps4 or the ps5 and you can play against other people regardless of 
what system they're playing it on. Now, with Sony doing it that way, that cross-generational gameplay, it does kind of solidify or make me more confident in my double dip kind of like scenario when it comes to PlayStation. Again, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Last of Us 2 are supposedly coming out this year on the PS4. Um, it's not a far-fetched kind of like theory to think that they are going to come out with a PS5 version of these two games as well with all the new bells and whistles that that come with that okay but in any multiplayer aspect you will be able to play against or with uh you know other gamers regardless like if you buy the ps5 version you're not just going to be with ps5 gamers in the multiplayer aspects of any of these games um if they do have them um so I really feel that when the PS5 launches, I, I feel like Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2 are going to come out with a PS5 version, uh, almost kind of like double dipping where, you know, people are going to buy the game at first on the PS4, right? And then they're going to get the PS5, even though PS5 will be backwards compatible with PS4 games. When you get the new system, you want all the bells and whistles, right? You want the new graphics and, and all that good stuff. Now, let me tackle something on social media here. There has been people, even John Linneman from Digital Foundry, and I have no idea why he tweeted this out, but talking about games being held back um, on the Series X because of this forwards compatibility. And what I got to say to you guys... Uh, even with this cross-generation gameplay, right? These games have to be kind of like the same structure when it comes down to it. Like, say Last of Us 2, for some rhyme or reason, is going to be co-op, all right? Um, you're not going to get a bigger, more complex world on the PS5 for The Last of Us 2 than somebody who's playing on the PS4. They're going to keep that uniformity... You know, that, that structure of the game the same. Of course, you're going to have better graphics. You might have, like, more foliage. There's going to be a lot of things. Uh, the lighting's going to be better. All that good stuff. But at its core, it's going to be the same game. So what Microsoft decided to do, instead of coming out with an Xbox One version of Halo Infinite and then a Series X version of Halo Infinite, since the, the structure of the game would have to be the same anyway they just had its scale all right when it comes to the launch lineup of new hardware it never breaks the bank on innovation most time developers developers what they do uh when it comes to launch lineups they definitely they heavily focus on graphics all right uh, to entice the gamer into getting the new system, you know, the prettier the game, uh, the more pleasing to the eye, you know, it's going to catch the attention of a lot of people. And usually the first year, year or so when it comes to new gen, like a new generation console, uh, a lot of the upgrades are all graphical and graphics can be scaled people. Uh, you know, when it comes to texture resolution, lighting effects, stuff like that, you might get ray tracing on, you know, the Series X and on the uh, PS5 when it comes to the, the type of lighting that's in the game. But you're going to get a baked in kind of like lighting solution on the Xbox One or the PS4. That's what's going to happen. Like people are saying that, you know, it's going to push innovation back. But when... When we're talking about a launch lineup um, with new consoles, there's hardly any innovation to begin with, really. It's all, it's all on the eye candy side of things. So I wouldn't be too worried about you know these games being held back when it comes to the first year with the Series X uh, and games being playable on the Xbox One as well. And then before you know it, that first year is through, you know, everybody's playing Halo Infinite, all, all this good stuff. And then you're, you're getting into like the um, Hellblade 2 side of things moving forward. Um, you know, the new Fable, 
stuff like that and and where that's where you're gonna see kind of like the benefits of the new uh cpu um the new cores you know what they're using with ryzen and and kind of like bigger more fleshed out worlds all all that good stuff so at the beginning of a launch lineup like at the beginning of the launch of a new hardware when you see the launch lineup um it's heavy on the graphics like that's the first thing that they really go in and try to please the gamers eye on so it's really not that big of a deal i don't know why people are flipping out over there on twitter now when it comes to cross-generation gameplay and yes i'm gonna reel it back a little bit because there's just one more thing i wanted to say cross-generation gameplay i feel is gonna be a big thing for third party developers all right uh when it comes to 2k making nba 2k and stuff like that i believe they're going to use the same servers whether it's uh, ps4 or ps5 whether it's xbox one or series x and i feel that cross-generation gameplay is going to be really heavy in the third party market and see that's another thing like third party they're doing things the the sony way all right everything that you see around you whether it's forwards compatibility whether it's cross-generational gameplay for this first year or so um it's going to keep the structures of all games whether they're on the older hardware or the newer hardware the same and and what's going to be the big difference is graphics but as usual, guys, this is the topic for today. If you like it, definitely hit a thumbs up button. Uh, if you like the gameplay as well, I went back in and I and I restarted Red Dead Redemption 2 because I beat it, but I didn't beat all the side quests. And I wanted to go back and start it from the beginning and kind of like branch out into the side quests in a, in a more kind of like natural manner instead of going in, beating the game, and then trying to go back and beat all the side quests i'm like nah i'm not doing it that way we're starting over so you're seeing some of my newer gameplay from red dead redemption um there's a lot of information in the pipeline guys there's a lot of things i definitely want to talk about uh as far as you know the gaming industry uh people from playstation have been seen kind of like all around san francisco uh within yesterday and today um people talking about the PlayStation 5 reveal is right around the corner. It's an exciting time to be a gamer. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you don't get into this whole uh, my piece of pa plastic is, is bigger than yours type thing. The whole console war thing is absolute garbage, to be really honest with you. All gamers should be happy right now. You know, we're getting we're gonna we're gonna get new hardware. It's more powerful. We're gonna get, you know, sequels to franchises we love uh new what they call ip new ip intellectual properties new games are, are right around the corner as well it is a great time to be a gamer so guys be excited about it i hope you found this video informative um but yeah i'm out so uh this is xbox 448 and i am definitely signing off